Hey everybody, it's Erin from The Impatient Gardener. And let's just start with the great news, which is that it is summer. We have been waiting so long for summer to arrive here and it's here and it's hot and it's humid and oh my gosh, it feels so, so good. Um, it's been a long time since I was able to um, show you any containers. Believe it or not, I planted up almost all the containers you're gonna see in this video about a month ago or more. Um, and just nothing has been happening because it's been so cold and wet here. In fact, I have watered these containers about two times other than when I initially planted them. Everything else is getting with so much hit, hit with so much rain and there's been no need to. Um, so things are finally starting to come along here. So I thought I'd give you just kind of a tour of the containers rather than planting them all up for you. Um, I thought I'd just sort of show you uh, where we're at. I did have a video on planting up the window box, so we'll give you an update on that, but everything else I'm just gonna show you for the first time, kind of walk you through what plants are in there. Um, just a quick note, I and people always ask, and I don't do a good job of mentioning this in videos, so I garden in southeastern Wisconsin, which is zone five. We have very cool springs because where we are is not fr far from Lake Michigan, so, we tend to have a lot of problems with the cold water from the lake in spring, but now things are warming up. The lake is warming up, everything's warming up and it is summer, yay. Okay, let's get into the container. So the first container here is the urn in the middle of the garden. And I've really gone a different direction with this than I normally do because um, I don't often do sort of these orangey tones, but I went orange in this. So what we have here is, first of all, the centerpiece is a um, colocasia. Uh, this one is called Distant Memory. It should get huge purple leaves on it. Um, it's just starting to get going. And I planted that in another container. So I'll show you there how I planted this because I did it in this too, it's a little trick. Um, and then I filled this in with oranges and purples. So, so the petunia that you see is super cal cinnamon and it's a really interesting petunia because the colors have been changing. So now it's got this sort of um, reddish orange color but for a while it had a pinkish orange. Um, I think it might be heat related or sunlight related. I'm not sure which, but I'm loving the color that it's going now. Um, also in there, I've got some purples. I've got a purple sweet potato vine. I've got a purple verbena. This was as close as I could get to purple by the time I got around to planting that. I would have liked one that was a little bit more purple, but that's all that's left. It's more of a violet. Um, underneath there, I've got some uh, creeping jenny, which hopefully will fill in. I just actually had some of this in the garden, so I just pulled it out of the garden. Hopefully that will fill in and really drape well. In the top, I have a really beautiful coleus called Spitfire that is supposed to get 18 to 24 inches tall. So I'm hoping that will get taller. Right now the petunias are kind of over the top of it. But so the next containers are the containers that I always plant on the deck. And these have gotten a really late start. We were actually planning on painting the pergola and we never got around to it. And I didn't want to plant these up and get those growing until the pergola was painted. And then we just decided we weren't going to get around to painting the pergola. So um, they are what they are. They're a little slow, but let me just show you what's inside of there because it's simple, but I think it's got potential. So we've got two new plants in here that are going to be on the market next year. So these were sent as trials. This is Super Bell's Double Blue. And over here we've got Super Tunia Vista Snowdrift. Um, this is I have a lot of hope for this. You guys, I don't have a lot of luck with Super Bells, especially in a mixed container like this, because they need quite different conditions than this Super Tunia does. So sometimes the Super Bells struggle a little bit. Then we've got more Creeping Jenny just because I wanted that bright pop. And over here, I've got a cup and saucer vine that I grew from seed. These are quite big vines and so I'm hoping that this will get all the way up and actually grow up onto the pergola this year as well. So I'm not sure if you can see it but the way that I always guide these vines up is I tie little white nylon strings. Um, I have a stake in the pot and then I wrap, um, um, tie them up to the top of this pole so they have something to guide along to help get them up the up the post. And then of course I repeat that on the other post as well. Um, and this is sort of house plant land over here. Everything's looking a little ratty because they've just come out. But by the end of summer, everything will be looking much better. This little pot on the deck isn't really anything special, but 
Um, I had a couple of really pretty begonias. Um, this is one that I got from Jay Berry, and I have to look the name up of it, but I've been growing it inside all winter, and it's really beautiful burgundy. And then I bought this little polka dotted guy. This is called Whimsy. I got that from Logies when I was ordering some other things. And in the back here, I just grabbed, this was at, just at the local hardware store. It's called Artillery Plant. I know nothing about it, but I thought it was good texture um, in that sort of combined pot. And that's kind of a nice little morning sun followed by a shade spot um, for that to grow. By the way, you guys, I'm gonna put all of the names of all the plants that are in these containers in the description. Um, so if you need to know what anything is, or I've you know mangled the name of something, it, all the correct names will be in the description. So here we are at the window box, um, and I am very happy with how it's coming along here. Uh, it is, it's really starting to fill in, and I feel like everything is growing quite evenly. Um, nothing's really taking over anything else, um, and I love that blue and that chartreuse of the um, licorice plant. Uh, the mandevilla is starting to climb up my little bamboo stakes there, um, and hopefully that will fill in soon. That really likes a lot of heat, and we just haven't had that quite yet, so it's getting there. I have a whole bunch of tomatoes growing over in the vegetable garden, but I always like to plant a couple of cherry tomatoes right by the back door because cherry tomatoes are meant for snacking, and I love just grabbing them. So here I've got uh, sun gold and Mexico midget, which are two of my favorites, and then in that container I always throw a little basil, and um, a couple of nasturtiums. This is orchid flame nasturtium, by the way. This is new this year. It's the first bloom on it. Boy, is it pretty. Um, and then I'm doing a lot of clustering of pots this year. So um, down here, I've got um, a hibiscus. This is a tropical hibiscus that I grew inside. Um, it's Hollywood hibiscus. This one is first to flirt. Um, it's a very beautiful one. It did great in the house this year. It was brand new. I got it as a very small pot last year in August. And then here I found this beautiful wicker pot and it's lined with a plastic pot so you don't have to worry about the soil touching the wicker. And I went with just one single diamond mountain euphorbia in there which I hope will get big and very ethereal and I have to tell you I'm loving it. By the way I found that pot at um, Terrain I have a couple other ones I'll show you that I got from there as well. Um, I don't know if they still have them or not, but um, I'm really happy with that pot. And by the way, if you guys don't know, um, you know, if there's anything you ever want to do to help out people, uh, people who do videos or bloggers or whatever, one of the things you can do is if you see something that they show you and you really love it, when, if you go to buy it, just mention somewhere in the notes, hey, I saw this on such and such. Um, that helps a ton, and I think it helps the companies too, because I think they like to know how people find out about their stuff. So anyways, that I'm really liking. It's, it's the most simple thing you could imagine, and I love it. So I told you guys that this year I'm doing some clustering of pots, and I, I am liking it. In the past, I've always had these two containers on the driveway stand by themselves, but this year I put a few other things for them just because I had some other things that were growing in pots and I don't like pots spread out all over. I kind of like them in groups. Plus, it's easier to water them. So uh, in, the, in the rose container this year, the rose in the top is Desdemona. Um, so I did try, this is the same rose I grew last year, although the same type of rose, not the same rose. Um, I have always had great success in overwintering shrubs in pots uh, in my unheated garage. And so there were two Desdemonas in here and I've had great success overwintering roses in the past. Uh, this year it just got too cold and I did lose every rose that I had growing in a container this year. So I bought a new Desdemona um, and I actually thought the other one was gonna live and it didn't, it started budding out and then it died. So I ended up having to order another one, but they were sold out of Desdemona at the time. So I actually have, I think it's uh, Winchester Cathedral or Winchester or something uh, in the other pot. Similar color, um, different rows and farther behind. So this one actually just started blooming today. Um, planted around this, this is just Supertunia Blue Skies, three of those. And then I have three of the Dichondra Silver Falls in here. And then in the front, I just have a, um, uh, foxtail fern and um, uh, eucom uh, eucomus. So that's pineapple lily and I'm growing that from bulbs uh, for the first time this year. 
Um, I saw it everywhere last year and I absolutely loved the way it looked. So this year I knew I had to do it. So I have three pots of Ecomus this year, um, different varieties, but one variety in each pot. And I'm just loving how it all looks. And that is another one of these wicker containers that I got from uh, Terrain this year. So this grouping is the same. Um, this is another Ecomus in front, and um, which is a little bit more filled in than the other one. Uh, this is just mint. I always grow my mint in a container, so I just figured I'd put it over there. By the way, if you want to know why you grow mint in a container, see this, see this shoot coming off right there? That's what makes lots of mint. Uh, and then um, in here, this is the one that I have the other rows, and I, this rose is quite a bit behind the other one, but I anticipate I'll get... In fact, I do think I see perhaps a little bud right there. So there will be flowers on this one, too. Uh, but I am loving this Blue Skies um, Super Tunia. It's got kind of a very a variety of blues and lavenders in there, and I think it's really beautiful. Okay, now we have to talk about the Big Daddy. This is the big, big, big pot over by the front door, which I always do something different in. Um, first of all, um, you'll notice that there is another Eucomus um, planted in um, kind of a barrel type pot there. And then I did another one of these wicker pots, uh, all planted in Kent Beauty Ornamental Oregano, which is just, just the most lovely plant. Um, just beautiful. Look, and look, the pineapple lily is starting to flower. Isn't that fun? So cute. Okay, there's a lot jammed in the big pot here, so I will just start quickly. In the center, we have a distant memory called Acacia, same one that's in the uh, same one that's in the urn in the middle of the garden. Surrounding that, I've got some Nicotiana. Excuse me, Nicotiana. I say it wrong every time, you guys. Nicotiana alata, lime green. Then in the front here, we have right in the center. There's a Chloe. Clematis. Um, it's a very small clematis. I'm hoping I'll get it to bloom this year. Um, it's going to be very short and I just want that to sort of cascade over the front. Uh, we have the um, lemon licorice plant. Again, picking that up from the window box. This is sparkling amethyst uh, superbina. Um, I kind of threw that in at the last minute and I think it's so pretty in there. I'm so glad I did that. Um, around the corner we've got um, Super Tunia Bordeaux, which is not really blooming great yet. Um, I think it's just got to get going. And um, here's some um, Wandering Jew, which I'm hoping will stick out a little bit more. I want to bring more of that purple to the front of the container. So I was hoping I was going to be able to show you the inside of this container, but it's really a mess in there, and it's, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. But I just want to share with you briefly how I plant things. If you've got one plant that wants much different conditions than everything else, um, how you can do that. So this Colocasia wants a ton of fertilizer. It's a heavy feeder. It's going to get these huge leaves, so it needs something to, um, to feed off of. And it also wants to be really, really moist. I mean, Colocasias can grow in ponds. So um, it wants to be very moist. And everything else in this container doesn't necessarily want that, um, those conditions. So what I did was I planted the colocation. I did this for the one in the urn too, in a large nursery pot, maybe like a three gallon nursery pot. And I mixed up a really rich uh, container mix. So I used some regular container mix. I put in compost. I put in a little bit of manure. Um, and I put in some, well, I, everything gets a dose of, um, of fertilizer. But I put that in there. And when I water this on the rare occasions that I do, I make sure I center a lot of water around the center, and then I obviously water the plants around the edge too. Now there's still holes in this, so this can still drain, so it's not gonna get waterlogged. But that helps keep give this plant what it needs, and once everything grows in here, you can't see that container anymore. And in fact, I was gonna show it to you, but already you can't see it. So that's my little trick for sticking a plant in um, that wants something different than everything else that you have going on in the container. Probably need a bigger container in order to pull that off, but certainly this one um, certainly fits that bill. Well, this isn't really anything earth shattering, but I did find a Tiger Eyes Sumac um, on sale for $12. And I had this turquoise container, so I did put one in there. You know, one of the things, if you guys were reading the blog, that when I was at Chanticleer, they had so many containers in 
the garden and I loved the way that looked. So I'm trying that with a few things and this is one of them. So this video is not about anything but containers but I couldn't help but just make a note. There is something really lovely that happened in this garden that I cannot take credit for. It just sort of happened. Down here we've got Allium nigra growing which is a really beautiful interesting kind of flat topped white allium. I'm going to plant tons more of those. I think that is a lovely flower. Above that we've got uh, Niobe clematis growing just up a stake. It's just I just put this pole in the ground and it grows there. But then if you back up and you look at the larger picture you see that I've got this Japanese maple growing over here and then the climbing hydrangea behind it. So we've got this repetition of this purpley red and the white and like I said I can't take credit for really planning that out but I'm sure I'm happy that it happened because I think it's such a beautiful a beautiful little moment in the garden. So over here by the garage we've got the trough and you know what I struggle with this container because I think I always think it's in more sun than it really is um, but I always want a vine because I'm hoping to get it over the pergola on the garage. So um, I went simple this year and um, in the past I've done all what sort of white and silver themes here but I thought I needed a little bit more color so here let's take a look at what's in it. So the main plant we have here is um, bossa nova begonia and that's the yellow color and I am in love with this plant because it's got the sweetest lovely sort of lemony butter yellow inside but if you look at the back side of the petals which you see because it kind of hangs down you get this beautiful salmony pink, which is just lovely. And then of course, um, so I've got three of those in there and then I just paired it with this trailing coleus. And because I felt like I needed something in the middle, I went out and I bought um, this ivy and stuck it there. I don't know honestly that that'll work, but I did feel like I needed one other accent to, um, to drape over a little bit more. In the back, I have three uh, Ruby Moon Purple Hyacinth beans, all grown from seed, finally getting going. Um, now that they're going, they are going, they're probably growing six inches a day, um, but they really have been sulking without any heat. Um, I don't know how these will do, and I don't know that they will bloom really well because um, there isn't as much sun here as there probably should be for them. But I think the vines themselves are beautiful and we'll kind of play this one by ear. I always love trying out new vines um, because it's always interesting to see how they go and it. Vines amaze me because how can they put on that much growth in one year. So just one more container to tell you about. This is a pot that I've always grown a rose in and again this rose died and so it wasn't for a while that I realized the rose had died so by then I kind of had to use just plants that I had left over for other things. So I went super hot in terms of color with this one. Um, I've got on top I put in a bunch of Mex Mexican sunflower. This is Tithonia. Um, beautiful bright um, orangey flowers and they will get quite tall, much taller than they are now. And then down here I have this uh, Constance Marigold, that's Constance with a K. Um, so I thought I'd put that in there. And then down here, and it's getting a little eaten by something, there's something eating everything this year. This is an improved version of Goldilocks Rocks Bidens, which will be on the market next year. Goldilocks Rocks Bidens is one of my favorite plants. It's fabulous. This has much bigger flowers, um, so we'll see how it performs this year. Um, but anyways, it's just, um, you know, a little moment in the garden, something I, I just sort of threw together, um, but I'm happy with how it turned out, and it's kind of nice to have that bright little pop over here. Okay, you guys, that's it for the containers that I planted up this year at my house. Um, let me know if you saw one that you think you might like the best and let me know what you're growing for containers in your garden this year if there's one that you're loving in your own garden because I always love getting ideas from other people. Um, I love container gardening. I think it is so fun. I enjoy it maybe more than any other part of gardening so it's a really big deal for me every year and I plan for a long time and and then I just cross my fingers and hope that everything ends up growing the way that I envision it will in my mind. So I hope you're enjoying your container gardens and your garden. I hope you're having a great day and we will catch you soon. Thanks. Hey you guys, every time you hit that subscribe button, a Newfoundland gets a treat. Is that good, Odin? Someone's just subscribed? Here. You might even get a little drool with that.